Yo, 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 no maniacs. Welcome to the show. It is Nomad Live, all bears all the time in conjunction with Sports Zone Chicago and Sean Sierra, who is not here today. He is on his way to Arizona to watch the White Sox in uh what is that preseason baseball? I don't know why in the hell you would want to be out there watching the White Sox out of all teams, but Hey, shout out to Sean. Hope he's having a safe travel and enjoying himself. And he should be back. I think he said he'd uh, come back for tomorrow's show and be yes. back at least by Monday. So uh, shout out to Sean. Hope he's having a good time out there and not eating. Um, so, hey, before we get into the show, man, kids has got some shout outs, got some super chats right away, man. People are already being generous. Love those guys, man. So take it away, kids. Oh, boy. Hey, No Maniacs, what's cracking? Good to see you guys all out there. Let's uh, let's start today's show off a little different um, and just give a little bit of love in the chat. Let us know where you're at and where you're from. All you Bears fans out there, being a Canadian Bears fan, you know, things are a little bit different where I'm at. Let's roll call it up. Let's give it a full all roll call. Let's see where you guys are at and where you're from. Um, while y'all doing that and blessing up the chat, um, Lula Shah, if you're Canadian, or Lula Chat, depending on how you want to pronounce it, bless us with a, a hundred dollar super chat. Give mad love to Lou. Um, Lou has a little bit of something he wanted to say here today, so let me see if I can find that. We'll touch on that real quick, right off the top. This you way, uh, to Lula chat up right know, quick. I'm uh, I'm hunting for it. It's oh, here we go. So, here's Lou, big Lou. I think everyone's going to be blown away at what Papa Poles has done since he's become GM. Justin is his guy, and he's going to respond to all the changes he's made by ex exploding this fall. QB, bear down. There you go, Lou. We're right there with you. And uh, more props to, to, to JF1H1M. Um, more props to, to, to Ryan Poles and his uh, his quest to be the, the GM that everybody thinks he's, he, he is. So, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's continue to follow that as we will definitely here at the Nomad Network. Let me, let me give a quick shout out to my, one of my favorite girls. She's my favorite girl, uh, formerly known as Renetta. We will now call her, when you see her in the chat, we will call her Remy because nobody calls her by, by her damn government name. It is Remy. When you see Renetta in here from now on, guys, in the chat and everybody <laughs> on the show, her name is Remy. All right, so shout out to Renetta, my girl, man. Um, hey, it's a lot of news, and I'm seeing a whole lot of different places, man. Kids, I don't know if you guys are looking at this. I, I was just about, to, yeah, man. I was just about to go through it. So, Indiana, Los Angeles, California, for the good old unapologetic truth, who's always rapping with us. Love golf, New York Bears fan here. Um, where else we got? Oh, Toronto, Canada. My guy, Deuce One FX. That's my guy. That's my my. Uh, my childhood homie, good, good representing my boy. Um, who else? Who else? Where, where else we got? Oh, off. Clearly, the monster of the midway is from Chicago, representing normal Illinois. Joyce, Joseph Archer. We got some Florida heads in here, originally from Aurora. Um, some Minneapolis heads in here. No love for the for the Vikings. Who else we got? Who else is around here? Santo Domingo. Dag. We're all over the map here. Arizona, Delaware. Uh, more in AZ, some homies from Connecticut, Connecticut, Donnie Sparks, a couple of folks in Detroit, Lawrence Cook. I expect to see some Don Burr and Brad Holmes Ooh. later. You'll have a company. Ooh, Bell from Santo Domingo is retired. Santo Domingo, I'm not sure where that's at. Let me put that up. Uh, yeah, tell me, but, where is. Put, tell me where that uh, is, William. Santo Domingo. I mean, is that? I will. I will admit to straight up flunking out of geography in high school, and I'll leave that there. Um, <laughs> London. Seventeen percent. There was no coming back. It was. It was a. It was a tough year for. for, for <laughs> Kirk from London, Canada, man. Dominican That's, Republic is uh, Dominican, Santo Domingo, brother. brother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Dominican Republic. He's in the DR. Dang. One of my oh, favorite uh, places. One of my favorite places. Yes, I love the DR. Rolling Meadow. Yeah, we got some some more love from Canada. Baltimore out there. London, Canada. ARR Kirk. Yeah, AR. All right. Okay. Oh, you're in T dot now. You're in T dot now. All right. Dominican. Jeez. Let me, let me get all over a them. super shout out to someone that uh, got got to me yesterday. Mo Fugra. He's uh he's from uh, oh. uh down in Orlando. Man, he's got a group of six uh, Bears fans at his job. They click up to uh. 
to watch us, man. Mo Fugra, shout out to you and the click down there. All you guys at work, man. I hope you guys are being safe down there. But, man, all the love from all these different places, man. It surprised me from Wales. What? Yeah, yeah. Robert Phillips from Wales. And Lula Shah has come back and, and, and corrected me. Lou's a girl with a boy's name, she says. And <laughs> she's out in Delmar, Delmar Woods. But she's also lived in in Arizona since uh, since seventy seven. Lou, what Vegas. would you like to call her? What would you like to call you, Lou? Because all the time you were speaking with me, I did think I was talking to her. Yeah, maybe Lou's just short for Louise, right? So maybe maybe Lou's what it is. So we'll, we can call her Lou. Hey kids, shout out my boy DJ Breeze. He's my homeboy. Oh, uh, there's there's DJ Breeze. Um, he's, he's, he's a real Chicago Kokomoan. Hey, he, <laughs> he's, hey, right he's, he's right there with you. He's right there. He's a homeboy, but he's originally from Chicago, man. And he's a super bad DJ, so I got to shout him out. Oh, Victor Dragons in Seattle doing it up. We got an NC Bears fan in the building. Wow, we're all over the map today. Who knew, man? I'm, oh, and 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 everybody's homie PJ is is in Kankakee, Illinois, doing the darn Kankakee. thing. Kankakee, Kankakee, hey, bro. I tried. Kankakee, I tried. Kankakee, let's get it right now. <laughs> hey, hey, DJ Deuce, it reminds me of, of Kokanee. We used to we used to drink this uh, got this beer from out of BC. It was good stuff back in the day. Kokanee beer. Anyways, I don't think they make it anymore. It's been a minute. Um, uh, geez, man. Yeah, man. All over the map. Who knew? Who knew? Come say, hey, you guys, man, keep, you know, everybody that comes into the show, man, we're going to do that on a regular basis, man, because I'm astounded by the reach of this network and how many people watch us and where people actually reside. It's, it's astounding, man. You know, the, the support, man, I, I, I'm blown away by all the names I'm seeing towns, cities, areas that people are from, man. That's, that's, that blows me away, man. But let's get started with some news, man. Cause we got a bunch well, of freaking before we do. So all of you new heads that are out there, there's a lot that just jumped into the chat, even just to represent, by all means, like, share, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. And let's get this thing, uh, let's blow this network up. That said, Nomad, kick it off, brother. Hey, man, ditto that. Um, let's get let's start off with some, the, the latest thing that I wrote down for uh, notes. So we can take um, we can take Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa off of our list of guys that we might want to target. They are restructuring to stay in uh, L.A. and play with the Chargers, man. They had some salary cap issues, but. That is now over. They are restructuring. They will be playing in L.A. Anybody want to touch that? I expected it. Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what I I'll say it. here, what I'll say here is just that uh, with them cutting Mike Williams, who again would potentially be a viable WR candidate for us, um, they cleared their books up enough to be able to 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 manage the massive contracts of both Bosa. And uh, well, Bosa, Keenan Allen, and 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 Khalil Mack. So, you know, what I, you know, he's saying he would he expected it. I didn't really expect it to shake out like that. I thought that they might wind up retaining Mike Williams, just given his age, and potentially moving away from Mack again, given his age. That's how I thought things were going to shake out. But it looks like um, they're happy with what the defense is doing over there, and uh, they're 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 likely going to retool a little bit more on offense. I think it was totally uh, it was totally about the cap. I don't know that them cutting Khalil Mack would would make them uh, cap safe because it would have uh, accelerated too much money into the cap. Uh, into the cap, I yeah. see what you're saying, and, that, and that's where they were. That's what they were looking at. They were up against the deadline yesterday. They had to be cap compliant by uh, yesterday, and I think that was their only move. They didn't want to cut him, um, Williams. That is, but. I think that was their only move. So I have heard that they're probably going to try to bring him back, but they don't. They don't have a lot of options right now. So, right. So, so Jermaine Mitchell just beat me to the next part of breaking news. Jermaine Mitchell says, "Let me put that back up." Jermaine Mitchell broke the news for me before I got to it. Jermaine, shout out to Jermaine Mitchell. Bears agreed to terms with center Coleman Shelton, formerly of the Rams, per Adam Schefter. That is correct. I read the same thing and have it down as a note. So what we have here is a 28-year-old who who got approximately 30 starts, I thought Keith said. Yeah, and, 30 um, starts over the last two years. Yeah, 6'4", 300. Um, I think he's definitely signing him him to come in to compete with Bates for the center job. He's, he's a swing center guard, but 
but he's got a lot of experience, as does Bates. And um, they, they're here to compete for that job. You know, he's here on a one-year deal. I'm not quite clear about how much that deal was, but like that, like they they stand true to form. They said that they were going to bring in every camp would be a competition. There's no, you know, it's going to be certain guys in certain positions, you know, for a fact, there's going to be a starter here or there. But, you know, I love that aspect of it. They're bringing in guys to compete. So nobody's coming in comfortable, you know, thinking they got no man. Up. Go ahead. Also, no, man, he was there when Shane Waldron was there. So he's familiar with Shane Waldron's system. So he's going to also be another member to come in and help implement the system and make sure everybody else along that offensive line uh, understand what the what the language and everything is as well. So, yeah, yeah, and uh, so man, yeah, I think uh, it's great for the team, man. We've had a glaring hole at center for the last couple of years. You know, uh, Lucas Patrick kind of whenever he was healthy, shored it up somewhat, man. But we definitely needed that help, and uh, I like the two players. I think Nicholas Moriano went right for the uh, for the gut. I think he put out something <laughs> like he's tied for the most pressures in the season, like 30 to 34 or something like that. I don't know how true that is, but that's what Moriano put out there. But uh, other than that, man, um, do like the signing. But there's n there's other news out there. Like um, they made it as a trade for uh, the Cardinals made a trade for uh, Desmond Ritter. Uh, to the Falcons, and they got received in return Rondell Moore, receiver. What do you guys think about that? Hmm. Well, I, I think find the it Cardinals, Cardinals got him. <laughs> so? I don't know, but I, I think I think more highly of Desmond Ritter than most people. I think he. I do as well. Yeah, I, I think he. I think he became a victim of circumstances down there. I'm not saying that you know he didn't have any flaws, man. But I, I thought he was a. Uh, I thought he had probably the most upside of all the quarterbacks that came out. That might sound strange to, to people thinking about the quarterbacks in that class, but me watching the film, man, I thought he had everything he need. His delivery is a little bit long, like on, on Justin's side of, you know, his, you know how the Justin's delivery is a little bit more arm than anything. He's, he's like that, man, but he's very accurate at Cincinnati. I saw him completely shred apart. I think it was either Alabama or Georgia. In a uh, in one of those bowl games, neither one of them made it to the championship, but he's completely shredded them, man. I I think the world of Desmond Ritter. I think given the right set, set of circumstances, I think he can flourish. Yeah. Rondell yeah. Moore is a is a nice piece for the Falcons. They are they are putting some artillery around this uh, Kirk Cousins here, man. Yeah, Rondell Moore. He you know he's a Purdue guy right up the road from me. Very uh very impressive. Uh, can stretch the fields pretty quick um yeah that's a good pickup for the falcons hey i and andre barnes man we just trying to get to some quick breaking news getting some to some league stuff trust me we're gonna get into the bears and, and talk about a whole bunch of that don't even worry about it bro but uh let me see let me get to some other news because andre is getting a little frustrated <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh jerry tillery uh released from the I believe the Chargers or the raiders i can't believe Deshaun Elliott, just safety, just signed with the Steelers. Um, let me see here. Let me see here. Here's something interesting. Um, Von Bell has gone back to the Bengals after being gone for, for a year. I think he was down in Carolina. They got him back safety, getting him back for a year. Sheldon Rankins to the Bengals, defensive tackle. Here's a funny one, man. Remember yesterday we were talking about Eric Kendricks going to the uh, the Chargers linebacker? Well, he just he just left them at the altar. And went to the Cowboys. So I mean, I think mo I think mostly because of uh, I forget the defensive coordinator. He was up in Minnesota. Uh, he was the head coach of Minnesota a few years ago. Um, uh, Zimmer, Matt Zimmer. Yeah, Zimmer is up there, and that's his coach. So he just followed his coach. Here's an interesting one. Um, starting left tackle for he's a 28 year old, and my guy Rusty. I don't know if you're in the chat, Rusty. But if you're not, I know you're going to watch the show later on. Gave me the information because I said I was going to talk about this. Uh, DJ Humphreys got a uh, piece from uh, Arizona. He's a starting left tackle, 28 years old. But my guy Rusty told me that uh, that he had some kind of injury sometime last year, and we don't know how healthy he is. But thought it was worth bringing that up. Anybody want to talk about that? We can. Um, there's another one, man. Um there's some tampering, tampering accusations for about Saquon and Kirk Cousins. Have you guys heard about that? 
I no, what's going on? There? But I didn't get a chance to read about it. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, they uh, they say Atlanta had been in contact with Kirk Cousins before, <laughs> even before the legal tampering, because sounds like they had the structure of the contract in place. So, uh, could be some draft picks. Might cost them some draft picks. Yeah, that's too bad, man. But uh, that's out there. How about this, man? Let's 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 satisfy Andre because we're going to get into some Bears talk now. Because remember, you know, we were expected that DJ Wanham was supposed to be here for a visit today, right? Yeah. So I don't yeah. know if that's actually going to play out. You know why? Well, because he. To, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Because because he is in uh, Carolina along with Chase Young right now doing a visit in Carolina. And so I just wanted to put that out there. I, I don't know if that, you know, exhausts him from uh, coming to Chicago and doing a visit today. I don't know. I'm just telling you what I no, saw. There was a co- there was a correction on that report, no man. I saw right before we got on the show, and it was co- uh, corrected that he's going to be in Chicago tonight. Okay, tonight. So that doesn't mean that he yeah. didn't go to Carolina today, though, right? No, he's in Carolina right now, but he's he's leaving Carolina. And he's he's definitely coming to Chicago to, tonight to meet with the Bears. Okay, so let's 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 talk about that because uh, kids, Keith, we've been talking about this for quite some time, man. And we knew that if if they if the Bears didn't sign that big name free agent like Daniel Hunter, Brian Burns, spend that that chunk of money on that one player, we knew that there was a possibility out there that that double dip in free agency at defensive end was a possibility. Maybe some mid tier guys, lower tier guys, and um, you know I don't see DJ Wanham as being a high tier, not maybe maybe mid to lower tier signing, and so. Me, I'm personally, I, I want to see Chase Young come through this building. I really do. I really would love to see Chase Young paired up with Montez Sweat again. I know people have their uh, complaints about, you know, different things they've heard about him or maybe seen on, on video. But uh, either way, I would love to see Chase Young here. I hope that he comes here on a visit, you know, but that's just my take on that. What do you guys say? Yeah. So my thoughts right off the bat is, they didn't want to pay and like, here come Chris. Um, <laughs> my thoughts on that right off the bat is, uh, so they didn't want to pay Brian Burns. What if Chris, since you, since you jumped in, do you, do you recall what Brian Burns wound up getting paid? Uh, like $150 million contract, but what, what was a per year case scenario for him? I think it was, uh, right at, tw- um, uh, hang, it was right at 29. Five? Yeah. Yeah. 29, yeah it, almost 30. It was, yeah. it was real. It was real close to 30. And, okay. So, um, that was never so going to happen. Yeah, so that wasn't going to happen with the Panthers. They're not in win-now mode. They can't really afford to spend that kind of money on a defensive end. Um, so off goes Brian Burns. And why I'm bringing it up is because these two young men are now over there, you know, doing the dance, and, and maybe they might, you know, offer them a contract, which is the odds are. Um, but... I wonder what they're going to offer Chase. And that's I'm actually moving away from DJ. I wonder, like, either one of these guys, what what are they going to afford to offer these guys in, in Carolina? Because I can see Ryan Poles scoring both either and or um, Chase Young or DJ Wanham at a really cost-effective rate, especially, like, especially if one of those two guys gets a larger package from, from Carolina. That means that... You know, they probably didn't value the other guy quite as much, and we probably shouldn't value him quite as much either. I think we're going to get a, at least one of those two guys on a discount. I believe. Well, Go ahead, Chris. Well, I was just thinking, uh, Wanham, and shout out to Berlissimo, man. He's been preaching uh, DJ Wanham as a uh, second level pickup for Edge. And you know what? Uh, the more I've looked into it, the more I like that signing. Um, you know, usually when you see What's guys, time, other, I, I would like the potential signing of, of DJ oh, Wanham. Okay. Uh, and Carolina, they probably, whoever they let out of the building, probably is going to end up in Chicago. If they let Wanham out of the building and he comes here, I think that's that'll be the guy that we do sign. He's been steadily productive. He's been across from an all-pro edge rusher. And so you know, because he's played across from Daniil Hunter, that's taken away from his numbers. But he still has had eight sacks um, last year. He had eight sacks in 21. Um, he's a productive guy, and he's he fits that profile that the Bears like. 
He's mm-hmm. long, uh, about 260. And um, you know what? Uh, I, I hope I hope we can get him in the building. They might have to pay a little bit more, uh, but they've got the money to do it. And um, if, if Carolina lets him out the building, I assume uh, I'm going to assume that the Bears will sign him. They have I to. Agree. <clears throat> I agree with you, Chris. I think um, with regard to both of the guys, the upside to one of them is he has a, a high motor. Never been any question about his effort. You know, and he, he his pursuit to the ball, pursuit to the quarterback. Or um, his health, his health, too. He yeah. doesn't have the health lingering over him like Chase Young. Right. That as well. And, and his familiarity with the with the North, with the NFC North. You know, I just think I either one of them I wouldn't mind in the building. Um, I think one of them we may have to pay a little bit more, but, you know, why not if that's the, if that's the case uh, with Chase? Um it would definitely be on a much shorter contract, more of a prove it type deal for him. Maybe him being paired back up with Sweat and along with Justin, since he played with Justin over at Ohio State, that might give him some uh, added incentive to really want to play hard and, and work yourself into a, a, a long contract after his prove it contract. But um, I'm kind of with you, Chris. I'm leave. I would leave more toward one of them, but either one of those guys coming in the building at this point, I'm good with. I am absolutely 100% all in on Chase Young, man. I I went back to the tape again and studied some more last night. I'm more convinced than I was yesterday that, you know, if you you pair that guy, there's there's a couple dynamics at play here with with Chase Young. Number one, we have uh, we have Eric Washington, who I am very confident in his ability to be able to enhance a player's ability and pull out of a player where a player thinks or might not know he has his style the dynamics that he plays with is very offbeat you know his uh fronts in the uh in a three four i mean in a four three set that's what's attractive to me because it doesn't always look the same for guys with their hands in the dirt trying to get after a quarterback i think chase young you know in looking at the tape he he flourished well at at having in a three-point stands with one hand in the dirt he flourished well standing up as a other pass rusher i would say that he stood up and played even better and so, you know, just the dynamics that Eric Washington lines his fronts up with is very, very, I mean, watching that, watching Chase Young all last night and then thinking about some of the stuff I've seen on the Buffalo tape, I know DJ Wanham will be fine, and, and I'd like to see because he's a blur off the line. I don't know if people really sat down and really watched uh, DJ Wanham, but I tell you this, that dude is a blur. I mean, a blur off the line of scrimmage. Chase can be too. Now, but this this dude is – is a little bit lighter and a little bit quicker than Chase Young. But, you know, it's all about, I think, the dynamic that they think they want to set up around Montez Sweat. I think the thinking is, okay, Montez is speed to, uh, speed to power pass rusher, more, more pro- power than anything. So what do you want to complement that on the other side? Probably a little bit more speed, right? And so, so you know, the, the combination and the blend of both things happening from one side to the other, it's very attractive with DJ Wanham, but I I believe 100% in my heart that they need to get Chase Young in this building. I, not only that, I believe they can get Chase Young at maybe about that dollar amount I talked about yesterday at a $13 million range, and they can still yeah. go out and grab another guy. That's why I said I still think we're in a double down at, at a defensive end in free agency territory. That's just how I feel, I'm feeling right now. But I think it all depends on – the market depends on what Chris was saying before. What's possibly um, what possibly are the are the Panthers offering these guys? What will they offer these guys? Because they could absolutely outbid us, and be be willing to pay one or two of those guys a lot more than you know Chicago might be willing to do. So that's that's an option that's on the table. Well, considering we're talking about Carolina, man, it's very possible they'll do that for the simple fact they're not the brightest. You know, they're not the brightest bulb in the box. You know, so with that being said, I can see them overpaying. <laughs> I can see them overpaying. Their, their ownership is a dummy, ain't it? <laughs> so, you know, don't be surprised, man. I mean, but with that being said, if you're willing to do that, then why not? You know, you should have kept Burns. But, hey, either way, you know, go figure. You know, well, they, 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 play, they played themselves on they played themselves on the trade on, of Burns. They could have got more for him last year. So Hold on, Keith, because somebody who, who is that? Evie just said he's projected. Wanham is projected. If you can find Evie, Evie's comic uh, kids, 
He said he can um, seven to eight. Okay, Wanam, this is EV Warrior. Um, Wanam is projected to demand only about six to seven million a year. Chase Young about fifteen. I'd go for Wanam in this case. No, man, I. I'd go for both of them. With those numbers, basically you're paying you're paying less. That's you're paying less about. than you're paying for 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 Montez Sweat. Now you've got a dangerous rotation at the at, at defensive end at the position. Um, yeah, and, I, depth. I, I, and depth. That's what I'm saying. Rotation. Well, that's your guys, that's your depth. It's not, keep this in yo. mind. Carolina only has, according to Spot Track, right now, about 15 million in free cap space. So that's Where, what they're going to offer. Other hand, how, much we, how much you say, Chris? Fifteen million. Oh God, no! And Let according to Spot eight. Track, we still have fifty million. Wow, who the heck is Carolina paying? Well, they they've got <laughs> they've got some dead money. They've got some dead they got money. Some, they got some bad. No, you had that money real dead, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody over there. <laughs> you, got Adam, you, know, you, you got Adam. Hey, you got Adam. You got a that money so dead. It's in the cemetery, bro. <laughs> they have, they have, right now, they have thirty-two million in dead, uh, dead money. They're dealing with. Well, we only have ten. Dang. So, uh, but listen, guys, uh, it's going to be one or the other. Ryan Pace, um, Ryan Pace, Ryan Poles. Please, is, no. It's probably not going to double up like that. On, um, we don't know that. 15, I, I said he's just go by history. I mean, he, he's. He's he's not gonna spend just to be spending, and you can probably uh, if that those numbers are projected to be what Evie said, you can probably add uh, prior twenty percent tax to that because uh, what the projections are, we've seen that teams are having to overpay a little bit. I have no problem giving um, uh, DJ Wanham ten million a year. Okay, and me... that's going to be on a multi-year contract. Because he's young enough, you don't have to get him a prove-it deal. Let Chase Young has never had eight sacks in a season yet. Wanham's done it twice. He had six and half a season last year, Chris. So, bingo. Uh, let me read Again, this. Again, he's never had eight in a season. Oh, whatever, man. You just don't like him. Um, I, no, I, I don't dislike him. I'm just saying, you know, for the money that you spend, it's all about value. Kids, we get know, We don't know how much money. I, no, I'm, I'm Chris. Let me get you. Let me let me get you this time. No, so I'm, neither, I'm, y'all get off Chris, man. Y'all get off no, Chris. No. I've been I've been I've been, I've been preaching. Make sure we be fiscally responsible. Tell him, Chris. Wait a second. Pay. You know I'm about that money. So the the value piece is where I'm in full agreement with Chris, and he knows it all right. That's why he said, "Get him, get." You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm saying. So the the value piece is important in this scenario. The value would would amount to. You're filling that defensive end position, and now you can affordably go and draft two wide receivers early. That's what it affords you to do, as opposed to getting the guy that both me and Chris want. And like it's a, it's a, it's just a reality. We both want we both want a, a Jared verse this year. If not, maybe a lot. Like uh, I'll give I'll give a secondary move there, but it, it, like just given the the strength of the wide receiver position and how week we are at it right now this opens up the doors for, for ryan Poles to go and get himself a malik neighbors and without really having to worry about, you know what i'm saying without having to worry about the, the defensive end position so that's where my headspace is now with a move like that maybe it's an availability move and that's where you find the value well right. i'm operating from the thought and i have all off season that we're going to have more than the five picks we have right now and so, you know what? In value, when you're talking about value in, in draft picks, the value comes from interior linemen on both sides of the ball, more so than wide receivers. Yeah, it'd be great to be able to get Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors. Those guys are, you know, going to go in the top half of the first round. And so smart money tells you to wait on a wide receiver because if you look at the top wide receivers in the league a lot of those guys come after the first round most of them do so, so that is not nomad network reasoning that is c-sharp reasoning and which is no that's not <laughs> hey no 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 that's not nomad you get him, chris. Reasoning. No, <laughs> that's, 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 uh, i'm just i'm tired of chris and that man me and chris argue about that all the damn time hey no <laughs> All you have to do is look at the. All you have to do is go back and look at draft history. 
That's all you have to do. I it's not my Chris reason. Is not, Chris is not wrong, bro. You're not wrong. Yeah. And I have I, honestly, I've, I've, I've had, and you, and I'm not. I'm just gonna give the initials. Since KW, I've had a hard time thinking about a wide receiver this early. But again, given how weak we are at the position, we've got wide receiver one locked down, two and three don't exist. I'd say we, we've got two wide receiver fours on the on, on the team outside of DJ Moore. In this scenario, and given how strong it is in this draft class, I wouldn't be mad at Ryan Poles if he gets us two and he gets them early. And there's another reason for this. The other reason is that the defensive end, like the leaders of the defensive end position kind of drop off at like very early into the second round, right? Like early into the second round, you're looking at an Ibiza Isaac later in the second round. After that, it drops off completely. So it's either you, you're, you're drafting one at the, at the, you know, at, with our first two picks in the draft or you're, or you're, or you fill it now in free agency. So, like I say, I'm not mad at this particular – if that's the move Ryan's going to make, I'm not mad if that's the move because, once more, it opens up the available market for wide receivers. Well, real quick before we get to Barry's <laughs> comment, if you can, if you guys can find Barry's comment, um, that would be great. But, you know, Chris likes to – he likes to shop at uh, Save-A-Lot, man. And he likes to preface that argument with – He likes to preface wait, 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 wait. He likes to preface his argument yeah. with the word but, but value. See, Hold on, hold on, man. You know, you know how many times you heard him say value before he said that. I got to keep this thing moving, man. I got to, man, because we're gonna get stuck here. Well, we're trying long. to keep it moving, brother. Go ahead, go Keith. Ahead. Go, no, no, no. Go I'm ahead. Trying to, go I'm ahead. trying to be funny. Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Touch on Barry first, and then I'll get to my point. All right, Barry Rule, man. He says, "Yo, Nomad Crew, I unsubbed a few local and and a few local national podcasters, and it's because of you." All exceed them in, in quality, unbiased, highly informative content. Thank you from Inglewood, South Side of Chicago. My South dog, side? Yeah, what's happening, dog? Shout that's out, what's... Barry Rule. Much that's, love, brother. That's why we do it. Peace, up, and love. Barry. Peace and love. Peace and that's love. What we Barry. do, Peace man. And we love. bring a real, real authentic feel to this podcast. And ain't a bunch of nerds sitting around just because they got jobs and and and, and corporate America is telling you about football, and you can look at them. Just on the surface, just look at them and know they ain't played a lick of serious competitive football. Otherwise, you come to a channel like this and you can sense it. You know it right away. Some people in here know some football around here and they kind of know what they're talking about. Patting myself and the rest of the guys on the back a little bit, but not, undoubtedly we deserve it. And I'm not trying to, you know, poo-poo those guys really to be quick, quite frank with you, but I can understand why people come over here and listen to the content and watch the content. Because you can tell people over here really know their football, you know. But that I digress. Uh, what did you want to say, Keith? So to, I, I want to piggyback on kids uh, with regard to his feeling about you know doubling up on the free agents at at DN. I understand where you're going with that, kids. However, look at it this way: one, if not one or the other, would be great to be in the building. Um, but then look at it this way: that also affords polls to do a couple things. One. We can't not we can't forget about Demarcus Walker. So we got some depth at that end. And the good thing about Demarcus is you can kind of move him anywhere along the line. So we got a, an extra end if we need to. If he don't double up on the two free agents, with that we can still go and get an edge early. Somebody young to develop that's going to be able to fill that spot. Can also still go, and I, I'm under the premise as well that we're going we're going to trade back and get additional picks. Then we can we can go ahead and get that 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 X or just get that the best receiver on the board at the time in the, in the first in the first round and cover that wide receiver spot and and we can always draft more receivers later on in the draft where we're getting those guys cheaper. You guys, what we have to remember thinking down the road is if you did, you we don't want to be in a situation like with uh, Cincinnati where we got two high caliber receivers. You can't pay both of them, so one of those guys are eventually going to be leaving the building. This way, if you get a couple guys later on in the draft, you get them on the cheap, but they're still high-quality receivers, more than likely we can retain them down the road, and their contract will come up before that first-rounder contract will come up. So we got to think of it along that way. Plus, I completely agree, we do need to bring in at least one of those free agents on the defensive end side. 
Okay. You know what? I keep forgetting that we have a little bit of depth on the roster already there. Like yes. I, 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 I do. So we got to show you some know love what? to those guys, man. Yeah, I do. So you, you know what? Maybe, maybe we just snag one of those two, um, either Chase or, yeah, or 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 DJ Wanham, and realistically, we could still double down on. Uh, we can double down a wide receiver, or we can get that. Like it, it, it actually opens up the coffers either way. He can make either move. All right, we just need to trade that damn pick. Sorry, did I say that out loud. All right, yeah. to... hold on, Key. I know you still got you something you want to talk about, but let's take a quick station ID and get back to it on the other side, Chris. If you don't mind. The best Chicago Bears content. Nomad Live pregame one hour prior to kickoff and Nomad at night postgame and every Friday evening at 7 p.m. Central on all the most popular streaming platforms and only on the Nomad Network. Hey man, you guys have been killing it, rocking it. Man, we are fat on a fast track to 2,000 subs all because of the love that's shown here in this chat and the people that watch the show, whether it's live, rewind, or on an audible audio podcast. Doesn't matter as long as you get the content and make sure you're sharing it and telling people about us, friends, neighbors. Let us, man, I'm telling you, if you guys keep doing what you're doing, I'm telling you, we're going to be next door neighbors to the biggest podcasters out there. The biggest Bears podcasters out there, we'd be next door neighbors. And, uh, you know, I ain't going to go there. I did that the other day, kids. What you thinking over there? You about to say? Uh, sorry. Sorry. I'm thinking about something completely sideways here. So, the Barelissimo's <laughs> quote. Um, Berlissimo, I swear this is a, a, a like an 80s song. I also swear that MF Doom, for all you hip hop heads out there, kind of redid a little piece of this in uh in, in a track. What track is this from Berlissimo? If I'm if I'm correct, if this is an 80s, an 80s track, tell me who who the name of the song and who who sung it, please. Anyway, sorry, y'all. Let me let me shout out. Let me get, let me make sure I, I, I do this the right way because we also do this in conjunction with Sports Zone Chicago and, and the Superback Sean Sierra. So the love that you give us, please unite. Uh, please, please do it over there at the uh, Sports Zone at Sports Zone Chicago for Sean and his network. We're just trying to grow. And we, I, re I remember this telling you guys this on a regular basis. And I mean this, you know, even the people that come in here and they, they disagree with what we say and the thing and the way we think, um, you know, I always look at it this way. If a person is down and needed help, you know, I don't care if I didn't like you. My my job is to help that person. And so whether or not you agree with us or not, we're all Bears fans and we all want the same thing as the goal. And get that's put some more on body, body trophies at Hallis Hall. And so just do us a favor as content creators. We work hard to produce this stuff for you guys. Make sure you subscribe whether you disagree with us or not. You know, that would, you know that's the kind of love I would show you if you were in, in need of it. And we're just asking. That's all. And so let's carry on with this conversation, man, because Keith, you had something that you were you were talking about right before we stopped. Yeah, actually, I, I'm sorry, man. I, I, I'm i getting blasted over here. My phone is going crazy. Um, I know we started out the show kind of different. We did some shout outs, but I got to give a shout out to some people that I know aren't able to jump in the chat, but they are definitely watching and they've been big time with regard to our subscribers and everything. Uh, shout out to my SIU Carbondale Salukis. Y'all know who you are. Thank you for chiming in. I know you guys are at work, but y'all tuning in and paying attention to my man Van Washington up there in D-Town, baby, out there running that truck for FedEx. Shout outs to you, my brother, and to a couple special people that's right there in Chicago. I won't say your name because you want to remain anonymous, but thank you again for paying attention and, and, and chiming in. I do appreciate it. We do appreciate it. And again, please like, share, and subscribe. Go ahead, Nomad. No, I was going. I was going to turn this one over to Keith because he so he got the response that he was looking for. But Starsky Love, there, I think that's what you were looking for, right? No, that's me. That's my guy, Starsky Love. Yo, it's real talk, Starsky Love. Every time I see your name, I think I think Ghostface Killer. So you're clearly a Ghostface Killer fan. I'm a major Ghostface Killer fan, but I'm an even bigger MF Doom fan. So so blessings to you. Blessings to Doug Dyer out there representing with some MF Doom love too. Rest in peace to Victor Vaughn. 
Metal Fingers, King Ghidra, rest in peace to the man. He's a he's a special artist and and he's near and dear to my personal heart. So uh, for all you hip hop heads out there that don't know anything about MF Doom, you are living under a rock. I'm just saying. Um, anyhow. That being said, a, a little bit more love to the man, Berlissimo, who clued me in to who actually sung that. It's Michael McDonald. The song's called I Keep Forgetting. Yeah. And there's a, yeah, that's, that's, it's, it's, come on, Chris. You should have known that one, man. What's I up, did what's know it. With you? I didn't know, but I was looking for something. I was looking at something else. And if you give me 30 seconds, I want to touch back on the value in wide receivers. <laughs> okay. I just want to do that. Listen, like, forget so, Michael McDonald. Yeah. Who forget <laughs> Listen, I just <laughs> I, I'm talking all time receptions, career career receptions, players drafted in the 24 uh 2014 <laughs> draft with all time top receiver <laughs> receptions wise. Devontae Adams, uh second round, 53rd pick. 2015, fifth round, 146th pick, Stefan Diggs. 16, uh, 2016, round five, Tyreek Hill. Uh, 2017, third round, Cooper Cup. Uh, then we get to uh, 2018, we get in the first round finally, and that's our own DJ Moore, and he went 24th. So you see the, 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 the pattern here, guys. If you look at the history, you can see that value in the first half of the first round for wide receivers does not always equal production. And I think that'll be, you know, there are outliers. I mean, you know, the 2021, I believe, or 2022, uh, you had Garrett Wilson, Olave, Drake London, all three first rounders. There are exceptions. But for the most part, you can find extreme value in a wide receiver in the draft in later rounds. And that's, that's my whole point right there. All right, all that was that Thank was you, sound, sound reason and sound information, but you're still wrong, and we're moving on. Thank you, Chris. And, uh, and, and, and Chris, yeah. you're right, Chris. You're right. I, I, I know I am, you, man. I, I, so, I know so, I am. Let's get let's you're get right, to the Chris. headliner, man. The the headliner at the Apollo says, Caleb Williams is he sending cryptic messages to Chicago? Mm. Is he sending cryptic mm. messages to Chicago? I we've been telling you guys mm. this mm. since the off season started. Patterns are patterns. And just me knowing what I know about people in his age group, just so you guys know, I remind you, because always people into this show for the first time, never been here. So I'll speak for that. Those people that don't really haven't heard about my background. I've been a mentor. Uh, I'm a mental health professional. I've been a youth counselor. I've counseled so many different people, age groups. It'll blow your mind. Listen, one thing I know is people in his age group, that's how they communicate. That's how they communicate. They tell you, what they like and what they don't like based on things they see on so social media. So they speak indirectly through that. And so Caleb Williams has been, been uh, liking, like, here's the, here's the story. Um, so, so Kay, Kay Adams from, I, I don't know, I think she's with CBS now, uh, interviewed uh, Hall of, newly uh, uh, inducted Hall of Famer uh, Devin Hester and asked him about the quarterback situation in Chicago. And Devin, you know, he more or less said, you know, that's that, that Caleb dude bringing a lot of baggage. We need to build around Justin Fields, basically. And Caleb Williams liked that. He not only liked that, he not only liked that. I had And I had to have people go in and source it out, and it came back accurately as his account. And he also, there was a, a few days ago, Chris brought this to my attention, and I ended up watching it. But uh, I think it was uh, Skip Bayless and uh, Keyshawn Johnson talking about the exact same subject and Keyshawn has been on record multiple times saying that you guys need to let that go as far as Caleb Williams go and build around this kid that hasn't been given the right opportunity and presented with the correct situation you guys need to be you guys have a quarterback and you need to build around him guess who else like that Caleb Williams Caleb Williams Caleb Williams so he's been doing that all off season and he's communicating yeah. with the Chicago fan base the front offices in Chicago, in Chicago, and here's what I know. And this is just from me talking to different people that I, that I know, scouts around the league. I met I met Southeastern scouts when I was living in Atlanta, and I almost became one because uh, one of my um, football coaches ended up being in the building at uh, at uh, with the Falcons. Man, he brought me up to Flowery Branches, tour the facility, the whole nine yards. I just ended up not wanting to take the job because it's just 
it's you don't have a life as a scout basically you're 24 hours a day pretty much 12 months out of the year having to you know rip and run all around the country man i just didn't want to do it but i digress um the point is when when you are when you have a guy of caleb's caliber and you're recruiting him to to draft him you do due diligence by not only sending out investigators scouts personnel people the investigation part portion of the uh of the of the recruitment is is more important than almost anything because so those guys are out there trying to uncover things about Caleb that we may not may or may not know, and part of that is monitoring his social media. So if you think for one second that the Chicago Bears brass don't know that Caleb is sending indirect messages to the city of Chicago and and the Chicago Bears front office, then I'm telling you you don't really understand how this really works. And and Chris has got the tweet up on the screen right now. It's nothing to say really other than he just liked that video of Kay Adams and uh, Devin Hester. So, guys, let's just respond to it because I think um, the media are, are conveniently kind of leaving that out while they're spinning in the narrative of we're drafting Caleb and we're, we're moving on from Justin. They're conveniently leaving this stuff out like it doesn't exist. Go ahead, kids. Oh, man, you, I hate when, you, when stuff like you know me, man, hate stuff like this. This guy, this kid, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to demonize him in any capacity. I really don't. It's not no. the person that I am. And I'm not going to hit today, um, even even given even given his history now of more or less liking um, all sorts of media posts that are specific to like, Hey, we don't want you to come here, right? Like that's really what what the message was from Devin Hester. There's a few others out there that he's again liked at, uh, on social media. At the same time, he has come out and said, "You know what? I like these things. I save these things for posterity, and I use it as fuel." Like Michael Jordan, you know, takes things personally. <laughs> you could quote that, um, but you, you know what I mean. That's that that seems to be maybe what he's doing. On the flip side to this, then you look at the conjecture that that Nomad is putting forth here just now, and yeah, maybe that's not what he's doing. Maybe he's really sending a message to the uh, the brass and the folks that he knows are monitoring his social media um, by way of, you know, maybe I don't want to come there. But um, I will say this. I will say that he probably had the opportunity to actually make those feelings known at the Combine when he did meet with the Bears for a short a period of time as he did. Um, I would like to think once more that he gets the opportunity to have that conversation with Ryan Poles, and it should be a pretty straightforward conversation. Hey, you know what? I don't want to go to Chicago. All right, we won't pick you. Simple. Move off of you, we'll look in a, in a different direction. Really doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be clandestine. It doesn't have to be. Um, at this present does. time, at this present time, it is. Why does it, Chris? Because you, if you if you just say okay, we're not going to pick you, then you lose all your leverage in 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 uh, negotiations with Washington. If Washington knows you're not going to pick him, then they're not going to give you the haul. They're going to force. This is what I've always said. Okay, I'm calling Washington and I'm telling them if if you're gonna if you're gonna go public, this is what I would do. I would go to the media today and say, look, we're going to keep Justin. We're going to build around Justin, and now this pick is for sale. If you don't give us what we want, Washington, I'm going to draft him anyway because Washington probably will try to call their bluff. They'll, they'll say, okay, well, just let him fall to us. It's not going to happen. I'd draft him anyway. And then that's when the real bidding would begin because they would know that you are in earnest about what you want. So if we've got him, if we've got the rights to him, you got 15 minutes to give me what I want, or I'm moving on to the next person, and we'll see what they'll give me. That's what I would do. So, I, but I'm, I'm going to argue with that. I'm just, a, I'm just a fan out here that's tired of the narrative. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm with you there. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to argue with you a little bit because I'm, I'm saying that conversation should be behind closed doors when he meets with the Bears, and that's just Caleb Williams and Ryan Poles have, as opposed to publicly stating, "Yay, we're going to take him." Nay, we're going to take them, the Bears. Well, they can't um, they tell should have him that, because they're not going. They're not. They can't be sure that he won't they, give that information away. Well, who's he going to give that information to? To, to the, the world. other team. To the world. He can't, he, no. 
So he's Caleb Williams is going to go publicly and 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 nerf his own stock. That's just no, dumb. No, he's not going to nerf his stock because his stock's not going to fall any farther than the number two pick because he knows Washington wants him, and he wants to go to Washington. But what if Chicago trades him elsewhere? Like basically trades that pick exactly. to somebody else. Exactly, but. Your value, so that's why you don't nerf your, your yeah, stock, right? The, like, you, the value is in the Washington pick. <laughs> that's where the real value is. I, I yeah, but like, but here's the, here's the thing: if 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 Washington doesn't want to make the pick, let's just let's just take them a little. Let's remove them from the scenario a little bit. Well, if they're this? not, gonna, let me let me pause yeah. you for a second here because because something happened yesterday that I thought was pretty significant. We kind of touched on it a little bit, but I think in context of what you're about to say, I believe. This is important. And so okay. when, you, when you hear a story that, that comes out, get le gets leaked out, that the, uh, the I think it was the Giants, and I believe, what, who was it, the Giants? And some other, another team, I think it was the Patriots, that, that, are, um, that have made offers to Chicago to move up and take that pick. And so when I heard that story, and it was a particular way of being, it, be, it, it was worded in a particular way, that made me instantly think, and I always trust my gut. Instantly, I knew that that was a Ryan Poles leak to a reporter to kind of put the kind of put the screws and kind of speed up the process with Washington. If you're going to do this, let's go ahead and do this now because I'm letting you know on record. Now, indirectly, he did that through a reporter that these teams here are looking, the Giants are looking, and the um, Patriots are looking to move up. So I want you to know that, and so we can get this process moving. And so that's, that's where my headspace was. You're right. But listen, yeah. guys, here's the thing. Ain't nothing going to happen until this dude's medicals are, are out. Nothing's going to happen. People are talking about, well, why haven't they traded Justin? He has no value. Nobody wants him. Are you nuts? Even if they wanted to trade Justin, they couldn't trade him until they know that Caleb's medicals check out. Nobody's going to do that. See, that's the curveball in the whole thing. Nobody knew that Caleb Williams was not going to uh, let his medicals be known. Nobody's going to trade. Nobody's going to pick him. Nobody's going to trade for him. Nothing's going to happen until after the twentieth, because these teams have to know his medicals. They have to, and that's when that's when dominoes will fall. There's no All question right. about it, man. People are talking I... talking this whole thing about the whole Justin. Nobody wants him. He has no value. That narrative is stupid. Because they were never going to trade this dude until the medicals were known of Caleb Williams. It was never going to happen. So that's why I ignore it, and it's it's really getting on my nerves, man. Let me take a high blood pressure pill. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, hey, don't give Chris a heart attack. We need Chris around here for a long time. Um, you know, man, go ahead, Keith, because I see you. You ready to talk, man? Look. I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna beat this drum until this drum is is flat, bro. We keep talking about a particular player, and I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. But let's remember it's about the pick. The national media has made it about one individual. There's other quarterbacks that other teams may deem as their consensus number one. It doesn't necessarily mean that Caleb Williams is that consistent number one to other teams, which makes that number one pick valuable. Now, yes, with Washington, it might be something for Washington to make it seem like, hey, we stepped up to get that guy. But let's just say there's a couple other teams out there that want that number one pick because he's not their consistent number one, and there's another guy that they want. First of all, let's address the Justin Fields potential trade or not or no trade at all. I'm going to go back to this. I believe that there was a conversation, nothing nothing promised, but a conversation as to who was going to be hired on at Washington to be their offensive coordinator. So that conversation was had. We know who that person is. But now you have a couple teams that are still quarterback needy. There's other guys. One, there, there is this year's, this year's Heisman Trophy winner, that is considered one of the top, if not could be the top quarterback taken in this draft. Is it possible that one of those quarterback needy teams deem that individual as their consensus number one? So I know everybody's getting up and, and oh, well, Caleb Williams is, 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 
is like this, and, and and he's 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 commenting on this, but again, thinking outside the box, he may not be everybody's cup of tea. So somebody's gonna come up for that number one spot to come get their guy because they're not sure that that guy is going to be available where they're picking. Okay, now. With regard to what Caleb Williams has been like and what he's been paying attention to, let's look at it this way, too. Let's give this young man some credit. He may be paying attention to all the uproar and the division within the fan base and say, hell, mm-hmm. I don't want to go there. No way, because if I got to deal with that, if that's how they're treating the guy that's the incumbent quarterback like that, what are they going to do to me if I have a stumble? So we got to look at it that way as well. He might be saying, hey, you know, great, great city, great football history, great organization, fan base, quite local, local media, very demonizing. I don't want to go there because I don't want to put my brand because we've got we got to remember now with these guys getting NIL money. He has a brand. Does he want to associate his brand with the organization and the fan base? that comes along with it. He may say, you know what? I much I much prefer to go to Washington where he could be a hometown hero. What would that do for his brand? We have to look at this from a completely different context and say, I keep saying, think outside the box with this because everything is not always so linear. So when we, when we look at this thing, let's give credit where credit is due. Pose is doing a masterful job as, as a GM. And how he's really holding the leverage with that pick. Because, again, we don't know who anybody is really deeming as their consensus quarterback. We The national media is constantly throwing Caleb Williams out there. It could be Jaden Daniels. It could be Drake May. Heck, it could be Michael Penix Jr. We don't know. But we do know that that number one pick that the Bears hold has some value. And for the Bears, it might quite be be possible that they may be able to come out better trading it to somebody else where they can get a bigger haul and just trading that pick down once versus having to pick, trade that pick down twice. Either way, it's going. it has value. We have to give credit to, to the young man for paying attention to what's going on, which lets us know, oh, his ear is to the ground. And he's definitely hearing the ra- the rumblings that's going on. But more importantly, let's look at let's give credit to Poles and how he's leveraging that that pick to make sure that he gets exactly what he needs, not just for this draft, but for future drafts to come. All right. Can I say something, no man? Go for it, man. Uh, in terms Uh-oh. of value, there is no greater value than the number one pick. <laughs> I'm sorry, there is no greater value than the number two pick for the Bears. Simply, hear me out. Because if they trade the, to the uh, Washington and, and, and move down number two, okay, they're going to pick up a haul because they can get what they want from Washington, basically. They can basically yeah. name their price. Then you're sitting in number two, and that's when the real bidding can start. So there is no, there, there's no greater value than the number two pick for, for Chicago. Well, even Chris, if I've said they, that in previous shows as well, yeah, so I agree it, with you on even that. Even if they trade down, yeah, they can maybe get more. They can get more in one single transaction with a pick. They could maybe pick up somebody's, you know, first round picks for the next three years. Yeah. But they can, they can do multiple trade downs if they go to number oh, two. Absolutely, and, that's, that's, I, I, and, I, and I think that's what they're counting on. Well, I, I would hope I, that's what they're counting on. We are, we no, are. I, I do as well, Chris. I think my frustration is coming in at the minute. Everybody's just harping on this one individual for that for, at that pick. It's it's about the picks. It's not a, it, as much as it's about the individual. It's about the value of the pick or picks. That's all I'm saying. People are um, listening to national narratives. They're listening to national people that don't have information that really don't care what's going on in Chicago. My frustration goes on with the with the local media in Chicago and how they have both. just they have just uh, uh, hijacked the narrative and and it's almost like it's almost like they have a personal vendetta against Justin. Caleb yeah. Williams, no quarterback wins Super Bowls by themselves. I don't care Mahomes or anybody else. Aaron Rodgers is probably again. great. No quarterback by themselves wins Super Bowls. 
No, no quarterback. Aaron Rodgers is probably the greatest thrower of the football that we've ever seen. I know he's from Green Bay. People hate him. I respect him because of his talent. He has one Super Bowl. Eli Manning. Why does he have one Super Bowl, Chris? Why does Eli Manning have two? Because he different, had a different question. I, no, I want no, you to no, answer no. the, the A Rod question. Though. Because he didn't have the team around him to take him to the next level. And That's he, what I wanted to hear. A perfect example. How did Eli Manning win two Super Bowls, win two Super Bowl MVPs, and he's quite possibly not going to even make the Hall of Fame? He might, and because of his name. But if you look at his career stats, they're on, you know, they're they're questionable. He's got two Super Bowls and two MVPs because he had a great defense. They had great timing. They won one as a wild card team. But they, their timing was they were healthy. They had a great defense and timing. Their timing, they came together as a team. That's This game, NFL football, is the ultimate team game. 11 moving parts, and if one goes out of whack, the whole play falls apart. That's what people get, keep forgetting. Patrick Mahomes is a great quarterback, but the, the earlier part of this year even, people were bashing him because they were losing. There was no way Kansas City was going to win the Super Bowl. But what happened? Their defense came together. They developed their young players, and they won a Super Bowl. Again, credit that to where's my buddy Sean. Coaching matters. Andy Reid's a GOAT. It's not just that Andy Reid's a GOAT, bro. And, I, and I've said this again. I've said this on the show earlier this week. That team was already built when Pat got there and started. Like, everybody yeah. says, oh, Pat Mahomes is amazing. He is I'm not taking anything away from the kid. But the fact of the matter is that entire team went to the playoffs the year before. They had a 5,000-yard passer the year before. Yeah, but that team, already, that team you're talking about now is no more. You have a No, you're right. And, 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 and that's why I came in where I came in. That's you, why you laid... coaching and, 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 and smart front office people help you win championships. That's what you we have now. now. We have now. We have great front office people. They've just fixed. They just told you what was wrong. They fired the entire offensive staff. Well, and they brought in yeah. experienced people. Well, this guy we have now is not a first time OC. He's an experienced OC, experienced play caller. We are we are at the hour and three minute mark, and we are going to get ready to wrap this thing because this can go on for the next two hours. I know it can. You can just hear the passion in everybody's voice. Talking about what they oh, talk. We got three hundred plus in the chat. You want to shut this down? You shutting her down? Uh, three twenty-eight. Right. You going for a little bit, man? We, if y'all want to go for a little bit longer, go by. by okay, or, or you can shut it down. It's up to you. Okay, all right. If you want to, we could do it. But uh, <laughs> I know when to get out. When to get in is good. And um, here, here's the. How about just start with some pleasantries before we close up, uh, kids? Man, three. We were up to three forty-five when I when I double checked. Chat was pumping tonight, rocking. Big respect to all you guys. So many new heads out of out of the woodwork today. Um, big respect, howdy partner, howdy partner. Uh, big respect to my guy Deuce One for showing up and and showing us a little bit of love. Thanks, Deuce. Um, geez, Louise, give some love to the to the OGs. Be yourself, Plank, J Two K, represent unapologetic uh, unapologetic truth. Muck Muck the General, Leonidas. Um, you know, coming from the other side, y Yada Zakwa, uh, Patty Laura. I didn't see our, our, I didn't see Junior today, but big loves to you, uh, minute, WC man. Brent. Everybody, what up? Telling us not to shut it down, man. They want us to go a little bit longer. That's Katrina, who's new to. I've never seen Katrina. I've seen somebody else. Please don't shut it down. And you know okay, what, Katrina? Man, for the for the love of the, of the game and the love of you guys who support. Let's do it. Us. How about this, yeah. man? We, we'll do a little bit more talking. So, hey, do me a favor, guys. We'll keep this fluid for a little bit longer. And how about this? Because we're busy doing the show and we can't get readily available information that's breaking. So people in the chat, please do me a favor and keep your eyes on Schefter, Ian Rappaport, or any, anybody like that to give us any breaking news that might happen. We'll continue. Tom to great. Tom Pelicero. Tom Pelicero. Yeah, Tom so we'll, we'll just for the love of you guys, man. We'll keep we'll keep the uh, we'll keep the bar open a little bit longer. <laughs> the bar. Well, so much for all my love in the chat. Well, anyways, uh, they drinking. They drinking the Nomad Network, man. They enjoying it, man. I enjoy. Who enjoy us? 
The Dolphins just signed Kendall Fuller for two years at sixteen point yeah. five. Ooh, cornerback. Ooh, sixteen five. Two okay. years. Wow. Oh, total total sixteen five. Uh, yes, at sixteen five. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, Trina Pullen has been with us. She, she's been listening to us for a while. Um, I think she said she's uh, been listening to her for a while. I've never seen her. So welcome to I've seen Katrina a few times. Welcome in Katrina. Most most definitely she's one of the uh the Lady Bear fans. I love it. Um wow. GR I can't even Gargo Golane Gargoloni. Man, like there's so many new heads coming out of the woodwork today. I like I say, I, I appreciate the heck out of it. Um thanks for all the love and thanks for showing up, you guys. We'll continue on though. We'll uh well, me and Chris will argue some more about about McDonald's value. Let me see what else I got in my notebook while you guys are talking. Because uh, well, I was going to say that I still expect the Bears. The Bears have got to sign a wide receiver in free agency. Yes, I don't think I so. Why, well, why you, well, yeah, they've got DJ under contract, and they've got Tyler Scott, who hasn't proven very much to me. I think that that'll be the next signing you see will be a wide receiver. All right, so I'm I'm just gonna say guys, we all need to leave. Too, you guys are way too hard on rookies, man. Especially rookies. I was just gonna say we gotta leave. Coach. We gotta leave the rookie alone a little bit. I mean, the um, position coach thing is rookie. garbage, and that's why he's that not out here. here. Well, I don't think it's about, I don't think it's about. I don't even think it's about being hard on the rookie. I think it's about more more than anything. It's important Experience. to have veterans. Yeah, Experience. it's important to have veterans. Especially when you know you're about to probably onboard two more rookie wide receivers. You got uh, a couple of one year guys in, in there, or well, at least one one year guy, a couple of uh, two year guys, or well, one two year guys. Yes, yeah, I think you need the, those veterans around because I don't well, think I don't okay. think I don't think uh, EJ. I mean EQ St. Brown is coming back, and no. the oldest the oldest receiver you have in that room right now, if he doesn't come back, is who? Well, I'm gonna be honest. Let's do this then. If that's gotta the place, have, we, we gotta have some better. We got yeah, and it, okay, I'm with you. Okay, let's let's talk about it then. If you're gonna talk about a veteran wide receiver, I would much prefer they bring in a veteran slot receiver, like a Curtis Samuel, somebody on that nature. Nah, so there's somebody, the guy I was gonna I suggest. Think, I you that, know, I and, and, and I say that a whole lot of difference. It's just about having well, it, in the room. Well, yeah, because let's 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 really if we're talking about developing. And we're talking about developing positions that this team has never developed before. So you got to bring in guys at certain positions to help with the development. We've never had anybody that has really played that position to the fullest. Those that has were guys that were seasoned vets that came in that didn't need any developing. We have a young core of guys that need help with development. Let's bring in a, a, a seasoned slot receiver that we can get at a decent price. Okay, we got we got DJ Moore. Bring in a season slot receiver to help those guys with the speed that we have that can fulfill that position. That are younger guys that they can learn from a from a Curtis Samuel because he's still on the streets. He hasn't well, been signed yet. There's not you a, know, and not with, a, Keith. There's not a. It's like a when you bring in receivers, it's not like you're bringing in a guy that's going to play X only. You're not bringing in a guy that's going to play. Z on. You're not bringing in a guy that plays slot only. I, guy, whoever they bring in, Keith. Is I get that, no man. I get that. Up. DJ, <laughs> DJ, DJ can help with an arguing, X guy. What you arguing about? You preaching to the choir. You we in agreement. I'm preaching to you. I might be preaching to you, and you you not might might not want to receive it. But there's other people that may understand where I'm going with this. I brother. know exactly where you're going. I, I think you. outside the I, box I, with everything. I don't That's think how he I approach stuff, I, bro. Keith, I don't think he's disagreeing with you. I'm I think what he's saying is uh you know, we we can't we're not going to bring in just a guy who's going to do No, no, I, and I get that Curtis Samuel thing. can help with development across the board, but I'm I just saying I disagree it, but, with that. I, I I totally agree. I would love to see a Curtis <laughs> Samuel signing. Right now we have Tyler Scott, DJ Moore, Valus Jones, Simba Webster, and they just extended uh, Col uh Colin Johnson. So of those four, of those four outside of DJ, I mean, we don't have a lot of experience. We don't have a lot of guys who've shown success. So they've got to bring in either a Donovan Peoples Johnson, uh, I'm sorry, Donald, Donovan Peoples Jones, Jones or a uh, Curtis Samuel, somebody of that ilk 
that can add some veteran experience to that room. Yeah, because and he has a relationship with, with, with DJ, so that helps as well. And I just think, and I'm not saying, I was not just saying that Curtis Sam can only play the slot. I know he can play a, he can play every position. I'm just really talking about veterans that want, I'm look. I'm all, look, when it comes to free agency, I'm not for overpaying for guys. I'm just not, you know, and, and, and Mike Williams, as, as, as good as he is, You'll be overpaying for him. Well, okay. uh, at this point, you're just Curtis Samuel, you could point. bring him no, in. We don't really know that either because he's coming off of the injury, so his body, well, his body might that's, be down. That's the other thing. I don't think they want to bring in somebody with injury concerns. Uh, and at this point, I mean, we, every season we have these cap speculation, these cap numbers that we are speculated upon. The, the guys always sign for more, unless you become in that last wave of free agency. Where you know they're picking bone, they're picking off the bone uh, pile. You know, the guys are going. You're going to get a little bit more, and that's okay. We got the money to do it. I mean, we got 50 million. We are still flush with cap space, but Ryan Poles is not going to just spend it because we got it. He's going to. He's going to get and that. We can't just spend word. it on free agents. We still got to. We still got to spend that money on draft picks. Well, and and, and they, they got to get some point, of that money too. About 14 million of that is going to be set aside. We know he got about thirty-five million to spend on, uh, and you keep in mind only the top fifty-three count against the the, the cap. Okay, only the top so, fifty-three. So I am I'm going to touch on this because because Keith, I'll be honest, you kind of blew my mind with that, and, and it resonates a lot with what I've been saying about really the Bears drafting Caleb Williams in the first place. If you don't have any. If you don't have any history of developing at the position, it's a little bit tougher for you to, to, to go and draft a player at that position and expect success. I'm, I'm just being, I'm being as vanilla real as I can here. So yeah, I, I, a minute ago, minutes ago, I was like, yeah, just double down in what hell I, I said it today on the show, double down a wide receiver in the draft, but mm, maybe you get a veteran too. Maybe you get a veteran to try to help. You do both. You or maybe you do both. both. Maybe you do both. I, I, again, right I, now, wide doing receiver, both is inevitable. Wide receiver is the a position of of a big need right now. Here's I mean, a, we, Chris, Chris. Here's the thing that I think we we all are missing in this conversation. I think everybody has a good point. As a matter of fact, I know everybody has a good point. My thing is this: I think the way they are thinking is you can bring in a guy. You can bring in two guys. You can just bring in a couple of guys. But to get the right guy, to get the right guy is the most important. You got to make sure what you're bringing into the building is the right fit, is the right – is he's he's dynamic enough and versatile enough so so that the conversation Keith and I were having makes sense on the, on the the in terms of, okay, are you versatile enough so that you're knowledgeable over here in the slot? Z, X, can you, can you function out of – you got to find the right guy. You know what I mean? Not just a veteran, but you got to find the right veteran to fit in what you're doing and who can grow and flower off of that veteran and what he brings to the table. I think that's the most important thing. You know, dollars and cents are important, you know, but I think, you know, we get we get the yammering on about, you know, what is what's affordable and we shouldn't pay this much or that much because we're fans. But we don't really this. We don't have anything to say. It's about what they think is valuable to them. You know, so if they decide to pay, uh, Mike Williams, $13 million a year. Somebody might on this panel right now or somebody in the chat might say, we overpaid for him. Well, to them, they think it's a value. And so we we be arguing about a whole bunch of stuff. And, and what's important is they get the right person in there or two people, however many they're going to get. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have some young rookies that's coming in. You're going to have a, a one-year guy that's sitting there that needs development. And you got people like Valus Jones, whatever they decide to do with him that's going to need to flower off of, you know, that veteran leadership. So, for, you know, for better or worse, I believe 100% kids, you are right. I think we double up on receiver early, early in the draft, like in the first round. Like, I believe it's going to be Marvin Harrison or and Brian Thomas Jr. or Leggett. I believe that's going to be the succession. You know, we're going to be in a spot to get Marvin Harrison, I believe. And the next person that we get, I believe it's going to be somebody like uh, Brian Thomas Jr. or who knows? Or Dunze might slip. I, I don't know. But uh, I know we're going to bring in a couple young receivers and we're going to need some veteran leadership in that room. <laughs> Can't argue with any of that. And that's 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 really where my headspace is. Th thanks for 
thanks for your 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 rant there and for, for lack of a better thing to call it keith because you, you 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 did kind of blow my mind there i was really sort of focused on that double down at wide receiver um some in some capacity in the draft whether it's early or you know a, a little bit further back but um i can now see the value in getting a a, a free agent wide receiver it makes a a bit more sense to me now and there's still some good guys out there i mean there's yeah. still yeah, a lot of guys out there. Curtis Sam is a great a great guy to bring to light. Uh, he has history playing across from DJ Moore already. Um, that would be that, I think that would work out. And I don't think his I don't think the the the, the price tag associated with him is astronomical, right? Like I, I think he's somebody that a the Bears well, not not like we're strapped for cash you know, cap room, but um, I, I think they can make a, an easy play to bring him into the locker room without. Uh, Really, even batting an eyelid at the at the price tag. Hollywood Brown is still out there. He's hey, only twenty six. Want to answer? Want to answer? Slick, slick's what? question because I got something to say to that. Slick sophistication. Do you guys uh, think that the the media has helped or hurt the Bears? I got a good question. I got I got a specific answer. And let me go first, man, because <laughs> yeah. you know what? As a matter of fact, I know that we are all on a crusade. Everybody that joins the Nomad Network, you know. We're not against all media. I just want to be clear about that. Herb Howard is a, is a, a good, a so close associate of ours. Also, uh, Alex Shapiro, familiar and, and friends with Ken Davis on the network. And so it's not all media that we're, you know, we're going after specific people that do specific things and say specific things with the intention to hurt or harm, you know, a, a particular player that's still on our roster. Now, you, to answer Slick's question, I believe 100% the uh, the media is doing polls a favor right now. They definitely are. That's what I believe. But go ahead. They they, they hurt us because they're supposed they're supposedly um, our connection to the Bears. They're supposed to be our our conduit to the information from the Bears. But they violated that in a major way this offseason, even more than in the past. So, but as fans. We depend on the media to give us accurate information, not create narratives and try to push their own narratives. And that's what they've done. So they've heard us as fans, but the Bears are sitting back saying, oh, yeah, go ahead and spread all the craziness you want. But I don't think it's affecting the, the, the teams they have to do business with. Everybody with behind those walls of, of these administrations, they, they know what's going on, but they're just not – they're they're feeding what they want to to the to the media in in order to try to change the narrative to fit uh, to give them an advantage, but the Bears hold the cards right now. Okay, the Bears are the team that they're holding all the aces, so it's not hurting them a bit. Go ahead and confuse everybody is what they're saying to the media. You go ahead and just tell them everything. Yeah, uh, you know we're going to draft uh, you know uh, Jim McMahon again. Whatever. <laughs> you know, they, they don't care, but it's just killing us because we don't have, we're all full of questions and they should be helping, giving us answers and they're not. Hey, Brian, Brian, you might want to back off the chat a little bit, man, because you, you lagging a little bit much. I, I got it. I got it from here. But the yeah. Um, geez. That whole narrative case scenario is pretty crazy. I, I don't know if the media has helped them or hurt them, but what I will say is, as I've said before, I believe Ryan Poles is actually pulling these strings. And when I'm trying not to, I'm trying not to to answer any of this politically. I'm just, I'm trying my best because, in my mind, if you give an, if you provide a narrative to some to the media and they run with it, they're doing you a favor, right? So they're 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 doing it to they're doing what they're told and, or and or what they've been asked to do. And uh, in that respect, maybe they're doing him a service. And that service is driving the price up for the pick. It's really clear and easy to see. Um, outside of that, if you know, if he really wants to pick Caleb Williams, all the narrative around the Caleb Williams pick doesn't really make all like it doesn't make sense. All that it does is it just makes all of the insiders right. Everybody's correct, and they all had an inside track, and that's great too. And it, it restores faith in the media. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I got to laugh at myself yeah, here. Yeah, because I don't know if you guys are watching yeah. media, but clearly you have. Did you use that phrase, itself. restore faith in the media? I don't know. 
I had to stop. I had to stop myself because it's hilarious to even think of. I, I, like, I, without being political, you can tell which which news channels are being paid to spew specific lines of narrative versus other news channels. You can tell. You know who they are. Click on them. Watch them. You kind of know what you're going to hear before you clicked on. In this scenario, there's only one news channel, guys. It's the mainstream media. That news channel is singing the exact same song. Somebody's playing the violin. But how's about this? Think about this, man. There's one particular uh, news media that's associated and actually in business for gaming. Okay? So imagine this. And this is just a conspiracy theory that they're pushing a particular narrative but at the same time they they're, they're going to actually double down and bet against that so when it does not come to fruition the narrative that they push they really cash out well and you know what Brian I'm Brian I'm sorry <laughs> Keith uh you just said some words you just said gaming you call him white you Brian said, for today <laughs> you just you just said the words gaming you said the words bet and you know what? It's been my fear in the last few years, ever since uh, they've legalized betting and, and, mm. and the NFL has embraced uh, the whole gambling um, environment. It's yeah. been my worry, man, that somehow that's going to taint the game that I love. Because you know what? Whenever you introduce money, and money is obviously the, the, the fuel that makes this engine run, it, it, it worries me, man. I, I just I know at some point um, I, I just don't want to see corruption become a part of this game. I love I love NFL football. I, I love Chicago Bears. I have for all my life. And now I'm afraid that those things are going to going to corrupt uh, something that I viewed as being pure. And it, that, that really bothers me. It really bothers me. And and to add to that now, you know, look, totally Chris, unrelated. And I understand that. And, unrelated and news. Go ahead. Go ahead, Keith. But think of it this way too, man. It's already it's it's already kind of affected it because we've been complaining over the last couple of seasons about the officiating. Huh. And they have literally Obvious tilted certain stuff. games based off of off of either missed calls, no calls or particular calls. So again, to touch on that, you know, I, I look, man, I, I, I see a, I see a, a 30 for 30 down the road that is going to really expose some of this, man. And, and, and I'm with you, Chris. I hate to see that it may uh, at some point taint the game, you know, but it's it actually going have on already. behind closed doors. Yeah, well, it, 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 it has already, you know, behind the scene for, for some time now, but it's becoming a lot more prevalent and, and, and more, I guess, noticeable. Well, if you're really paying you know, attention, you know, there's it's funny because you know, the holding occurs on every play, and along the offensive defensive players, everybody's held, and it's such a uh, you know what, it's, it seems like it can be called when it affects the outcome of the game. And 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 you know what, I'm not gonna say that the refs cheat, but I'll tell you what, man, I've seen some stuff that was so obvious. You know, and I, and then it goes back to why won't they make all plays <laughs> reviewable? All plays should be reviewable. If you're going to make any plays, and I don't want to hear that crap about, all oh, the game will be too long. No, it's not. No, it's not. They don't care about the game being long because that's right. more advertising time. That's more money they can make. They don't care about that. Make all plays reviewable. Well, how about this? You know no, before we before we move off that, you're you're. You're so bang on the 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 non-review. Like, there's certain things that the NFL eventually is going to have to start to look at, and that's one of them. Non-reviewable calls for roughing the passer and pass interference, things like that. Just just don't. They, they are not only are they ridiculous, but those are game-changing penalties that nobody can has a has a say against. Um, other things that, and again, this is me being a. This is me being a technical guy in, in, in my occupation. I do a fair amount of technical consultancy. And I I feel like the, the NFL, given the gambling case scenario, really has to start to embrace technology to try to make you know things as simple as where did this ball actually land 
more feasible and realistic. You got to, we're bringing out change. We break out change. It's so archaic when you really think about it again, from a technical perspective, we break out change and measure, measure where a ball has been moved. From when, point a laser, to point. when a laser can do that from, uh, you know, a hundred yards away, a, a laser can do it. An IOT <laughs> chip in the ball or somewhere near the, near, you know, on the sideline could exactly. judge that via GPS immediately. You don't have to spend time waiting for a referee to run out. With a with a stick with a chain on it, like so, things like this are so easy to fix and change within you know within the game, but, and the NFL doing its best job to make sure that those things don't change. But here we are in gamble world now, right? Like it's a whole different world now. They might have to start to embrace some of these changes to make the game a bit more realistic. From a gambling perspective, that's true. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, Chris. Because well, uh, let me say this just, just, just real quick. Because his super seconds. chat, his super chat. I, I know, I seen that, but I just wanted to say, you know, there is they they, they speak against some of those things because there is a human inv uh, human um, element involved with with referees. Referees are part of the game, and I'd hate to see that taken away. And and you know, we talk about how robotics is going to take take over everything in AI. I want to see those human elements remain, but there has to be a gray area somewhere where you can make mm -hmm. make everything accurate and still keep um, you know the, the human element, the referees on the on the on on the field. That you know there's got to be a way to to find a happy ground, so to speak. So and, and, and that I fully agree with. And you know what? I'm I'm, I'm going to touch on it, and then I'll, I'll hit these these super chats across the board. Um, there is an e there are easy ways to actually maintain and grandfather both case scenarios. I, I'm not trying to get rid of referees or make it so that those guys don't have jobs. The there's a there's element. a bunch. Of, well, there's a bunch of other calls that they could be making on the field that are that are again less questionable, holding things to that effect. Make those calls, make those judgments. I would have to say it would probably require maybe one or two less referees per game. But that saves the business a, a fair amount of money. And those guys can do other things, whether they're they're sky judges, et cetera, et cetera. Trust me, like I'm, I'm not trying to get everybody fired. I'm just trying to put it so that when folks are gambling, it's a bit easier to believe the pass interference call that costs them X amount of money out of the woodwork that isn't challenging. You know what I mean? Like that's that's where I'm at. Before Anyhow, you, before you do these super chats, I just want y'all to know that whole conversation is boring as f to me. But carry on with the chat. Well, of take course. a nap, take a nap, then, and we'll call you. Boring, man. Uh, just know that. Well, hey, I want to ask. The, I want to ask the scrolls, man. Is your picture this picture of that crazy preacher who used to do all the cussing while he preached? <laughs> man, do the do super chat. Don't listen to Chris, man. <laughs> That the scrolls. I can't, I can't, big, that can't be his picture. <laughs> big love to the scrolls, regardless as to who your picture is, whether it's that guy it's or that um, that's gotta be that crazy. Would you ignore or Chris? Really Chris really the chats up there, Chris. Yeah, hey man, you supposed to be taking a nap. Go back to sleep. Man, get on out of here. Hank the basement, the homie Hank. I'm telling people to check you guys out. Much love. Here's a little something to keep the party going. Thank you. We appreciate you, Hank. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for representing. Thank Thanks you, for Hank. sending us a little Thank you, call. Hank. Let's uh let's let's holler at the homie WC Brant. Caleb team in collusion with the commanders are doing all they can to retain a high draft pick and get Caleb. Hmm? Makes a lot of sense to me. I would not be surprised by this. And that's well, let's just put it this way. If if Magic Johnson called you and was like, hey, like, want to talk business? You're probably going to have a conversation with Magic Johnson. WC, so. WC is as accurate as you can be, man. That right. is absolutely what's happening. And I'm, mm. I'm, I'm going to send him back a picture of Caleb tied to a chair with a, with a sack over his head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is Caleb what we want. This is Caleb what we want. <laughs> so this is some from Jose Sanchez. Jose, big respects to you. I know you didn't send a super chat in, but I, I gotta hit it anyways. Hey kids, are we sure that these people from the media are actual Bears fans? Because if they aren't, that would explain a lot. I know we are. Um, I know that for mm, sure. There's actually a longer, a much longer list of folks who aren't. And I'm not going to, uh, he just outed Dan Weeder for it. I'm, I'm going to leave it there. 
Um, there's a, there's a fair amount <laughs> for you guys. I, I'll let you guys figure out who those guys are without putting them on blast. There's a very long list of folks who aren't. Yeah. Um, anyhow, we'll, we'll let, I'll leave that alone. Jose. Um, geez. Uh, WC, Brad, one more time. Bang my super chat. So we banged it. We got you up there, WC. Um, my guy, Mitch Osborne, big respect to you one, one more time. Sending in a $20 super chat. How many insiders predicted any single one of our free agents so far? I don't I don't know any. No, no. Um, also, did the Falcons, Falcons tamper? Very possibly because there's some. Uh, there's possibly. very possibly. So what I've heard now, and this is more coming from uh, Kirk Cousins in some capacity. I believe Kirk was saying that he's been in conversation with Drake London for weeks. So I don't know how much collusion that is, but eh. it's, not, it's not collusion oh. when it's with a player. Okay, all right, fine, cool. Players, players but can talk he, freely amongst themselves. He said that Drake London okay. been trying to recruit him for for quite some time. Now, R. E. Gambling, uh, uh, just look at what they did last year with Will Levis when he became their favorite number one um, because of the media. Hmm. Right. Like it, it, there's. There's very interesting little situations when it comes to gambling in sports, especially in the NFL, and with respect to the ambiguity of a lot of these calls. Um, in this case, Mitch Owens is, is, is or Osborne, sorry, is referring to um, yeah, draft stock and, and and what they did for 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 Levis last year. I think Levis is going to do well in in the league moving forward, um, but it really affected his stock last year in the draft. Um, you know, he's not, there's who, no man, you, you're going to tell me who this guy is. Who's the homie who smoked, uh, who was smoking weed through the gas mask? Laramie Tunsil. Laramie Tunsil. Dropping his stack like that, dropping his stock like that, just over a little, a little green in his, and in we, his gas. We've been looking for a left tackle Stay ever off since. the weed. We've been looking for, <laughs> we've been looking for a left tackle ever since. Ever since, right? So he dropped. Um, you know, th there's there's ways to con again. There's this is this is what the media does, guys. Like uh, clearly, somebody was like, "We don't like Laramie." Here's some information about Laramie. Go tank Laramie, and the media said, "Okay," <laughs> and they when they did it, it uh, again, every, like that. Everybody that means, fell for it, but and Miami, everybody, Miami and, and he's a great player, he's and a he's great a great player, player whether. Whether he's stoned or not, just to put that out there too. I'm not sure if it's legal in in in, in Florida or not. Mm. Anyhow, mm. Um, my guy Daryl Gibson yes. with a five dollar super chat. The local media in Chicago drives the the national media. Or, sorry, drives the national media polls leaked he's the correct. Greer trade down. No mention locally. That's why, or sorry, that's what drives pressure. So basically, he's saying that he he. Yeah, the, the, Poles is the is is Poles is playing the violin, guys. Is, is what is, you know in translation is what Daryl is saying. That's that's a simple translation for you no guys. Question. But that that story about the uh, the uh, Giants and and the uh, I think the Patriots wanting to move up. That's all Poles, man. I want as soon as I saw it, man, my instinct said that's Poles leaking, telling the commanders like, hey, dog, y'all better get your stuff together, man, real quick, because you get you get leapfrog here. We don't want to have to do that because we want to double up. But uh, well, yeah, most the most definitely, man. And I every, think the every team, every team has a fake whistleblower in their media department. The guy who gives out the information that they want out. But that's what that's what he does. They're media people. So all right. So so guys, so, hold on a second. So sorry, I, I just want to touch this. So so what was his excuse last year? Then I'm assuming you're talking about. Albert Breer last year when he said, um, "What a what a, sorry, not Albert Breer it was Peter King." T C T Collins, give, give me some context here, and I'll and I'll, and I'll make sense of what, you, and I'll answer your question. I imagine he's talking about how how they moved uh, the pick and not do went from one to two. I assume that's what he's talking about. Why didn't they make that happen this, last year instead of the trade with the pen? That's what I'm thinking. He's thinking. But he can he can oh. and clarify himself. Well, it was, it was the price. Yeah, it probably was. Yeah, they got better and, value. And, and it was the price. It, it wasn't and, just and, that and, though, guys. And you didn't have yeah. a consensus number one either. 
Well, he oh, there's that's a big part. That's yeah. a big part, Chris. The other part to this is Poles was trying to do what I think he's going to do this year. Last year, he was trying to trade with the Texans and then the Panthers. That was the move. The Texans pulled out of the move. Oh, he's and that's what Peter King. That's the comment that Peter King brought out later on to say, "Hey, yeah, that's what Ryan Poles was trying to do. He's trying to move." From here to there, and then do the do the Panthers trade potentially get DJ Moore and Brian Burns or one or the other? We just went one or the other, got DJ Moore and skipped over the Texans trade, um, which worked out very well for the Texans. They're they're super smart to have done what they did. And so I also did thought the Panthers, quick, and I also think the Panthers learned too that um, that the Texans did not want Bryce. You know what? You know what? Let me reverse that. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, the Texans learned sure. that the Panthers didn't want Bryce, so it, for them it wasn't necessary for them to move up to two. I mean, move up to one because they knew that they guy would fall to them. You know, so yeah. Uh, Tepper unfortunately, did not unfortunately, Panthers kind of played that. They they kind of showed their hand a little too soon, which made it, it the easier owner. for the Texans. It, it was the owner. The owner made it obvious. He overruled. They didn't want to take Bryce Young. The no. front office didn't want to take Bryce Young. The owner made him. Well, how about yeah, that? Yeah, no, like there's and then there's proof of that. There's 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 a there's a quick the firing of Frank Wright was proof of that. Well, the, 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 it's not just Frank. It's actually uh, why am I blanking out? Who's who was the Josh McCown? McCown. There you McCown. go. Yeah. So Josh, Josh was talking to C.J. Stroud. And there's a quick clip of it, and he grabs him, daps him up, hugs him, and whispers in his ear. Something to the effect of, like, we're coming to get you. They both nodded each other, and he leaves. So it kind of looked like he was, and this is, I, I believe, at towards the end of last year's combine. It really looked like they were into C.J. Stroud mm -hmm. for all intents and purposes. So when uh, when the big boss says, no, we're going in another direction, you stop and you look at the big boss and you go, okay, we'll do what we're told, but you know we're going to have a conversation later on about how, how messed up this is. And when the kid doesn't make it to where he, you know, where you hope he's going to make it by way of, right. of, you know, by way of, of, of actual achievement on the field, they had to have that conversation. And the conversation was, bro, we told you to get the other kid. And now we all know where Frank Reich is. So, he's on a couch making so, $10 million. So while we're at it, kids, while we're on you and you're talking, let's, let's round this out because I do have to wrap this thing up. I have to right now. So All right. Give out some pleasantries before we get out of here. Man, you guys were awesome today. Great conversation with my homies here. Nomad, Chris, Keith, good chopping up with you guys as per normal. Um, the chat was just bumping. Uh, T. Collins, I, 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 my bad for putting you on blast. I understand it was just a, just a conversation that you were having with good old Thomas in the, in the chat, Thomas Gage. Um, I'll let you, I'll leave you guys to that conversation. Outside of that, man, um, geez, Yeshua, good to see you, my brother. Um, who, who else I got a shout out? Evie, Evie Warrior, um, Jay Grizz, Jay Sanders, Daryl Gibson, and the other Daryl Jan Hammer. Like, I'll leave. I'll leave the Yon. Miami joke. Jan Yon. Hammer. I'll, I'll leave the Miami <laughs> Vice theme music jokes alone. Um, Eric Christensen, Notorious TBG. Bultarski, uh, man, Barry Rule, Knox Corbett, big love to you, Knox, and Dobsy34, um, Akuma2000 from last night sending us a little bit of love and a little bit of super chat love there. Perfect. Mad respect to you, as well as um, Jerry Billings yesterday sending us some super chat love after hours. Really appreciate that, too. Um, guys, really, I, I can't thank you enough. For all of your interaction in the chat, it's awesome. Um, again, like, share, subscribe, and leave your comments on the video after the chat after the show is done too. Uh, we appreciate that as well. It really, uh, really helps massage the algorithm. So, uh, Chris, what do you got, brother? Oh man, I love massaging the algorithm. Is that what um, you like to massage? I love to massage the algorithm, and I appreciate everybody in the chat. You guys, uh, <laughs> I've always said, man, if if, you, if somebody listened to you talk for an hour. That's a blessing, and then you got people in here that that show their uh, their kindness, also uh, with the uh, super chats, man. So we can reinvest in this channel. I uh, appreciate that, guys. That says a lot. 
and know, please, that we love you guys, and we, and we appreciate you uh, being part of our family. Um, again, my guys on the panel, Keith, Mr. Kids, Yes, sir. Nomad, Brian in the back, love you guys. And, um, you know, nothing's going to happen until the 20th, guys. So uh, after that, we'll get some answers, and we will continue to bear down. Go ahead, Keith. To our sports zoners, and I know Maniacs, once again, thank you again for chiming in with us today. We do greatly appreciate it, especially the sports zoners that's chiming in, even though our man, the super back, is traveling. Safe travels to you, my brother. Um, yes. To those that are, that are unable to participate in the chat, because you're at work. We want to thank you as well for uh, chiming in and, and, and keeping us going and, and watching us and following us. And to those that watch the show after hours. Thank you very much as well. You know, we do recognize your views as well, but more importantly, do us a favor. Even if it's after hours, you can still like, you can still like the chat. You can like everything, the content that you're watching, but more importantly, please subscribe and share, you know, because that helps us help you uh, continue to give you the content that you're looking for. Uh, to my brothers on the, on the panel, kids. Chris and Brian in the back, Nomad, and of course, a shout out to, again, our super back that's traveling. Much love, always love and enjoy chopping up football with you guys, especially bear football. With that being said, remember this, you guys, we're blessed to be a blessing. Nomad, to you, my brother. Man, let me tell you guys something, man. Thank everybody on the show. I'm my trustees, man. Kids of Canuck. Canuck, thank you for everything, man. You've been a blessing to the channel since you got here. Keith, man, I'm glad to have you here. You're going to grow. You're going to grow tremendously, man. And you're taking to this like fish to water, man. And I can see it happening all the time, man. It's, you're new to it still, but you're you really getting there pretty quick, man. And I like it. And uh, Keith, man, Chris, Brian, man. Brian, man, I appreciate you, man. We got you some gifts coming on the way, man. We're going to get your situation uh, reset, kind of. That's what we're going to do, man. We're going to invest in you and make sure you get the tools that you need. I promise you that. You got a promise from me on that. Uh, Chris, you already know how much I love you, man. We argue all the time, but this guy's like, seriously, like brothers to me, man. He and kids, actually, and I'm growing on, and, and Keith is growing on me, but me and Chris talk so much that we are actually brothers, it seems like. He's arguing and cussing me out yesterday, but. Nomad, you're just being silly, and I won't stand for it. <laughs> Michael Jackson ain't having it. Hey, man, I'm hey. gonna tell y'all something for y'all out there listening. I really get on no mad nerves, but it's all good. It's all in no, love. No, Thank no. you again, my Hey, if you no did, man. I tell you, struck trust me. He, <laughs> he tells he tells me all the time. Um, King Booker World, big ups to you for the for the little something something. We we appreciate it, King Booker. You are you are. An original no maniac. Don't my, go anywhere, bro. My dog King, man. You know every every dime counts, man. I appreciate if it was just a nickel, man. I appreciate every dime we do. And so I just want to say this to you guys, man. I love you guys. I absolutely love you guys. And I say that not lightly, man. I love coming to do this show and engaging with you guys in this chat, man. It is absolutely it's I get overjoyed, man. Too a little too often, man. Maybe because I got this big old heart, man. But when I see all the love and support, I can't help but to say it all the time because it just bleeds out of me, man. And so I just want you guys to know that this is all authentic, man. And we appreciate you guys to no ends. I'm going to leave you guys with this little statement. And this is uh, something I want you to keep in your head and in your heart. There is no earthly way that the Chicago, the city of Chicago has brought Justin Fields this far to drop him off here. Did I make myself clear? He is not going to get dropped off here. Justin is going to be a bear. They didn't, he didn't go through all this stuff for nothing. All the rigmarole that came with having a roster being torn down, what, two different coaches, three different coordinators. Nah, that's just unfair to him, man. Justin Fields is going to be a bear. And we just in the middle of this, a bunch of smoke right now, but Ryan Poles is doing his job. And at the end of the day, we're going to end up with a whole bunch of draft picks and Justin Fields with a uh, better built roster. And so look forward to that. I just want to leave you guys with that. So before I get out of here, I got to make sure I leave you guys with these famous words, love, peace, and hair grease, y'all. Peace fans, tear down. down no maniacs. Yeah, yeah.